Даже не пироги. Понимаете, слушайте команду. Команда стоп, прекращаем все действия. Команда брыг, где нашать надо. Желаю успеха. Первый раунд. Round one underway. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds. You heard the Russian national anthem. That's because the national super lightweight championship is on the line here. That's the prospect, Valery Oganishin, who you see in the black and gold trunks. Looks for a nice little token early in his career. Dmitry Mikhailenko, he's been well beyond this level, as we've documented. Now kind of on the slide. We've seen him stopped in fairly dominant fashion in back-to-back -back fights against Kurbanov. And then two fights ago against Dylan Sharat. He's established that he's no longer really a threat and no longer really durable enough to test contenders. But perhaps for someone like Oganishin, who pales in comparison when it comes to experience, perhaps Mikhail Yenko can give him a test. Really the question will be how durable is Mikhail Yenko at this point? In his prime, he was a, a tremendous pressure fighter. He took a good punch, he had an iron chin. But all those years, all those wars inside the ring and also the wars in the gym with his close friend Ruslan Provodnikov, who he sparred for basically his whole life, seemed to have taken their toll. Good counter right hand from Oganishin, and you can see some swelling already starting underneath the left eye of Mikhail Yenko. It is interesting seeing Mikhail Yenko, as we mentioned, move up to 154 for that bout with Kurbanov. He has been pretty much a career welterweight, now coming down to 140. The, the results for fighters li like Mikhail Yenko moving down in weight late in their career after a couple of losses, a couple of stoppage losses, uh, typically aren't positive. A combination from Oganishin. Mikhail Yenko still trying to walk him back. Eats a left hook along the ropes in the final 10 seconds. Terrific opening round for the prospect, Valerio Ganeshin. Right, we see that big counter right hand from Ogunishin early in the round, there's another one. You see the swelling start almost immediately upon impact. Round two underway. Let's see if Mikhail Yenko can make some adjustments in this second round. He was eating those pull counter right hands in the opening round. We saw the swelling starting underneath his left eye. His corner was working on it, but still very visible. The 
this represents a step up in competition for Oganesian. No matter how much you think Mikhail Yenko has left in the tank at this point. And to this point, he's beaten names like Arkady Haratunian and Bakram Payazov. The journeyman that you'd be familiar with if you watch Russian boxing, in particular Russian undercards. Names that test prospects on the way up. Good one, two, right down the middle there from Oganesian. There's some good body work from Mikhail Yanko. And things can get interesting in this fight. If Mikhail Yanko can absorb some of these shots in the early rounds, remember this is a 10 round fight because it is for a national title. That's territory that Mikhail Yanko has been in that Oganeshin certainly has not. And for pressure fighters like Mikhail Yanko, sometimes these early rounds are what they need to just get going. In recent bouts, we haven't seen Mikhail Yanko be able to get going, but the competition was also a lot stiffer, a lot more experienced than what he's facing here tonight. Final 10 seconds of the second round. Ganeshan going to the body there for one of the first times in this fight. Big right hand connects. Good way to cap off the second frame for Oganeshan. Round three underway. Valeri Oganishin and uh, Dmitry Mikalyenko. Ten rounds for the Russian Super Lightweight Championship. Mikhail Yenko may be starting the stage in his career where he tests young prospects. Maybe sets his sights a little lower going after national titles like this. Now Mikhail Yenko has quite the the tragic backstory, as uh, Jim Lampley once put it, a, a tragedy befitting a Russian novel. He grew up on the coast of the Black Sea. He was raised by his mother along with his two sisters after his father passed away when he was young in a crane accident when Dmitri was two. His mother worked three jobs to make ends meet before becoming paralyzed. So Dmitri says it's his motivation to become a better man and to make more money so he can do everything in his power to help her. And you know, perhaps that's one of the reasons why he's kind of changed his sights and is continuing to fight on. It's all he's known throughout his life. Yeah. 
does have a university degree as well outside of boxing, but there are a lot of people counting on Dimitri. A good right hand. That might have staggered Mikhail Yanko, who seems a little out of sorts now. He is wobbled along the ropes. The referee's going to want to take a look at this. The referee, no doubt, cognizant of the recent history of Mikhail Yanko. So you have to wonder, uh, how long is the leash? If we see another sequence or two like that, Mikhail Yenko has recovered reasonably well here. He's back in the center of the ring. He's defending himself. First time in this fight we've seen him impacted by the power of Oganeshin. Good counter right hand. Connects on the chin. And Oganeshin shows the small audience here the right hand that just landed. That'll do it for round three. Секунданты. Четвертый раунд. Round four underway. Larry Oganishin wobbled Dmitry Mikalyenko in the previous round. In the final minute of that round, Mikalyenko was able to recover. See if that is the case here in the fourth. As Okanishin looks to climb the ladder in the 140 pound division. And there have been a handful of Russian fighters in this division who have kind of been on the, the shores of title contention over the last few years. Names like Fedor Papazov and Petros Ananyan, Batir Akhmadov. All of them have come up short, at least to this point. No doubt Oganishin's goal is to, at some point, break that pattern. Good counter right hand again from Oganishin. Just continues to kind of hold that jab out there, catch Mikhail Yanko slipping in the same direction, battering him with that right hand. Now, Mikhail Yanko is getting to the territory that he wants to be in. Just isn't letting his hands go in the same way that we've seen him in the past. Now, Oganishin going to the body. Kalyanko definitely doesn't want to be in here, although cleverly slipping along the ropes. Gets out of danger, but there, eats another right hand. Yeah, an uppercut there from Oganishin. Digs down to the body, tries to come back up with the right hand. Mikhail Yanko narrowly avoids that one. A little more zip on the shots from Oganishin, who might be motivated. 
by the fact that he hurt Mikhail Yanko in the third. Might be sensing that a stoppage is a possibility for him. Round. round five underway here between Valerio Ganeshin and Dmitry Mikhail Yanko. And just a programming note for everyone uh, watching at home, our next bout between Nikolai Potapov and Alexander Grischuk will start at 2.30 Eastern time. So... There could be a delay after the conclusion of this bout. So following this contest, there could be a short delay prior to the beginning of Potapov and Grischuk. We keep our attention here on this Russian super lightweight title bout. Young prospect, Valerio Ganeshin, 25-year-old from Ruza, Russia. Looking to pick up a, a national title here and perhaps even more importantly, a win over a recognizable name in Mikhail Yanko, who is known to boxing fans globally. I mentioned previously a, a consensus top 10 welterweight. Wins over Bradis Prescott and Kareem Mayfield, which was aired on HBO. It was co-featured to Kovalev Pascal on HBO. And then upon returning to Russia, that's really when the slide started for him. And now we get to the point that we're at. Or Mikhail Yenko really in the, the autumn, if not the, the winter of his career. Less than a minute left to go here in round five. Shoe shine combination from Oganishan. Finishes that off with an uppercut. Oganishan very, very relaxed in there. Very deliberate with how he places his punches. If anything, you want to see him put a little bit more on some of these shots. It's not like everything has to be a fastball. Not everything has to be hard. Just a little more zip on some of these shots in the interim. Especially right now against Mikhail Yenko, who really is not offering a whole lot offensively round after round. There's a good combination from Oganishan, and round five is in the books. see a good uppercut from Oganeshin. We saw a left uppercut later in the round as well. Mikhail Yenko resorting to defense along the perimeter. The large portions of this fight, although we see swelling that 
popped up in the opening round is mostly kept under control by his corner. Secondante, Shestoy round. We enter round six of note. The odds makers, depending on which sports book you looked at, had the round total. The over under set at seven and a half or eight and a half. And almost universally, Oganeshin, a five to one favorite in this bout. Which is quite remarkable, again, considering Oganeshin just 3-0. and oh. And Mikhail Yenko at 23-7 and seven with his pedigree. But some astute line makers. Recognizing the reality of this fight. One fighter on his way up, another in Mikhail Yenko. On his way down. But still trying to prove that he has something to offer. Particularly to the local scene here in Russia. Body work right along the belt line from Oganishin. Puts a little extra behind that left hook. Another right hand right on the chin from Oganishin. Mikhail Yenko is going for a walk here. He might have been affected by that one. Oganishin now piling it on here along the ropes, looking for one more right hand perhaps. Referee getting mighty close. Yenko doing just enough to stay in this one. He seems to have recovered a little bit. But he is getting picked apart by Oganeshin. Body shots from Oganeshin now. Not a whole lot left in the tank from Mikhail Yenko who now starts to turn away. He is in serious trouble. Big right hand connects, and Mikhail Yenko is wobbled. The referee has to be taking a look at this. Final 10 seconds. He might survive the round, but I don't know if that's to his benefit. Uh, we'll see what the corner of Mikhail Yenko does, but you'd have to think. They're starting to feel a responsibility to take care of their fighter here. And you hear the ovation underneath these highlights. Perhaps that's an indication of something. There would be a good reason for this one to be stopped. And I believe it is. Yeah, that will do it. The corner has stepped in, and that will do it. Valeri Oganishin with a stoppage win over Dmitry Mikhailenko. And you have to think at this point, You don't want to tell a fighter what to do, but you wonder right now just where Mikhail Yenko could even fit in, even as a journeyman, even as a gatekeeper. You know, he just wasn't able to provide any resistance tonight, even against a 3-0 and fighter. 
But a good-looking win on paper for Oganeshin, the most recognizable name on his resume. And a national title. Let's make that official. Let's send it down to our ring announcer. So Valery Oganishin improves to 4-0. Oh. That was his third professional knockout. Meanwhile, the mechanic, Dmitry Mikhailenko, slides to 23-8. And, and you wonder if perhaps that's the last time that we'll see him in the ring. And if so, it was an exciting and valiant career. A lot of fun fights. Валерий, пожалуйста.